Hello, hello. My name is Smriti, and welcome to part two of Bookish Awards Night, where I am going to be talking about my favorite books of 2021. I am doing this in a fun way, where I have like an award ceremony. I have categories, and I have nominations, and then we have a winner amongst them. I put up. Part one just yesterday, where we had some amazing categories such as best writing, best character, most surprising, funniest, most emotional. There were、um, a lot of nominations that were absolutely amazing, as well as their winners were par excellence. So do check that video out if you haven't already. Also, if you want, you can subscribe to me over here down below. If you aren't already, hit that bell icon and all of that good stuff. And you can also follow me on other socials if you are so inclined. So as I said in my previous video, I read about 150 plus books this year, and all of them. No, not all of them.、Um, a lot of them were amazing. Some weren't. I have made a worst books of 2021 video. If you want, you can check that out.、Um, but this includes the best of.、Um, so basically, the categories will have nominees, and I am recommending all of these books within these nominees. However, the number one is going to be my number one,、um, and it could be. Three books in this category, or six books. It really depends.、Uh, but yeah, those are those are basically that. And of course,、um, all of these books I have read in 2021. But that doesn't mean that like they all came out in 2021. They could have been、um, books that came out、uh, previously as well. They are just included in、uh, this video because I read them in that year. But、um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you have any other questions. But without any further ado, let's just get into the first category of tonight. Which is best debut author? Oh my god! I am so excited about this because I have read some great debut authors this year. Authors which I am definitely going to be like looking out for because, like, oh my god, they like completely took my breath away. Um, and I have four nominees from within this, so let's just get to the nominees: Ashley Audrain for The Push, Caleb Azuma Nelson for Open Water. Cherry Jones for how the one armed sister sweeps her house, and Will Smith for Will, <laughs> and the winner for this is a bit tough, but also not really because I was just completely taken by this writer, and that is Caleb Azuma Nelson for Open Water. This book is a short one, but oh my god, I was. In awe of the way that he wrote, because it was just so lyrical and amazing, and described love and friendship and how that can change just over a few months,、um, but also packed so much in terms of racism and classism and just all of that.、Um, I absolutely loved the way that he wrote. It was sometimes maybe a bit too lyrical, but I feel like for his debut book, this was an absolutely spectacular read. I cannot wait to read、um, more from him. Moving on, we have favorite discovered author, and this is essentially an author that probably has written before 2021. But I have never read them before. So this was a person that I was just really happy that like I discovered this year.、Um, and all of these authors, highly recommend. Please do check them out.、Um, but yeah, these are the nominees: Becky Chambers, Carter Sickles, Emily Henry, Kania Minato, Ning Vo, and Rick Riordan. I absolutely loved my time reading all of these authors. I'm just so happy I discovered practically all of them. But my favorite、um, and the winner for this category has to be Ning Vo. Now this was so difficult to choose, but I chose Ning Vo because I loved everything that they gave me. They gave me. An exciting new world to discover, some great characters,、um, and just lush writing, and that is something that I am so excited to discover more of.、Um, I absolutely love all of the nominees, to be honest, and I will be reading more of them this year, one hundred percent. However, I just loved the rush that Ning Vo gave me with their writing. It just completely took me by surprise, and I was just I. Just、loved it, so I'm just so happy that I have discovered Ningbo as a writer this year. All right, next we move on to best series. Now, 
I'm not the sort of reader who reads too many series. However, um, I did apparently read a few <laughs> this year. And in this um, category, I am going to include books that I have read more than one book of. So if there is more than one book that I have read from the series, then that is included. If it is like there's only one book in the entire series so far, it doesn't really count. So we have four nominees and they are... The Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan, following Percy Jackson and his friends who are mostly all demigods, children of Greek gods, as they get themselves into adventures and quests that will ultimately fulfill an ancient prophecy. The Saga series by Brian Vaughan and Fiona Staples. Marco and Alana fall in love and have a child, but they are from two warring worlds and now these worlds want them dead. This is a graphic novel series about their life told from their daughter, Hazel. The Singing Hill Cycle series by Ning Vo. Set in a world reminiscent of Imperial China, we follow Chi, a non-binary cleric who is tasked to find and collate stories as they travel around trying to collect them. The Thursday Murder Club series. In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. While all of these series completely had my heart, however, the one that just, uh, just took me by storm is the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. These are five books that I read in quick succession in an entire week and they consumed my life so much that I have bought the next series, which is like there is a series following it. Um, I love this book and this series so much it gave me so much joy it is a middle grade young adult book but like holy shit i was in love um it is so bingeable so readable um and i think that like people from like all over not only middle grades though however i would fully give this series to like middle grade young like kids in school essentially um I mean, this was enjoyed by a full-grown adult such as I. So um, it just gave me so much joy. I absolutely love Percy and all of his friends and all the other demigods and all the gods. They were just so much fun um, to read about. Um, and yeah, this was this definitely has to be my favorite series that I read. However, the others are great as well. The next category is best translated book. And this is a category that I'm very excited to have because I do try to read a lot of translated books I have read uh, I don't know how many but you can see like right here I'll put the number right here um, those were the number of translated books that I read that year um, from all over the world and I was just so happy reading them these six nominees are truly the creme de la creme I absolutely fell in love with them um, they were great for me I'm hoping that they are great for you as well so let's just get into the nominees Bullet Train by Kotaro Isaka translated by Sam Melissa a bullet train from Tokyo with five killers find themselves and their lives getting intertwined through a bunch of hijinks as they fight to get a suitcase of cash but also get out alive. Confessions by Kanea Minato translated by Stephen Snyder. A young teacher on her last day of school confesses something to her class which spirals into disastrous consequences. Kim Ji Young born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju translated by Jamie Chang. A story of a young woman in Korea, which may be the story of many. A story of how gender inequality and discrimination have hurt. Rita Wellinger by Shanta Gokhale, translated by the author. The story of the eldest child of a dysfunctional family who, after years of taking care of the family and dealing with so much more, has a nervous breakdown and is recuperating in the hospital. From here, we see her recounting her life. The Hour of the Star by Clarice Respector, translated by Benjamin Moser. Following the life of a young woman in Brazil, we see her deal with sexism, class differences, while just dreaming of a better life. Whereabouts by Jumpa Lehri, translated by the author. A professor tells us of her time and experiences with people and in solitude in an unnamed city in Italy. I absolutely adored all of these six books. However, the winner, if I truly, truly, truly had to think about it, and it took me some time, y'all, um, is going to be Rita Wellinger by Shanta Gokhale. I absolutely adored this book. I love everything that it stood for. I loved the feminism. I loved the, the faults in the characters and how that clearly showed and how this person went through a nervous breakdown. It spoke about mental health so beautifully. It spoke about 
just being the eldest child of a family it spoke about dysfunctional families it spoke about like sibling relationships and love lives and romances and being in your 30s and your 40s and trying to have a career it just spoke about so much in this short 181 pages book um i absolutely fell in love with it the writing was sublime but also supremely simplistic and very easy to understand um just right for a beginner right for a person who's like been reading for 40 years of their lives oh my god i just f- fell in love with it i just i i don't know how else to sell this to y'all but um it was a just a really good good solid story and i feel like it should be read more often okay we have best non fiction now non fiction i think i read 17 books last year which is not great however i read some amazing books which spoke about various different topics so here are the nominees and what those books are about Annihilation of Caste by Dr. B R Ambedkar an absolutely essential book about caste written as a speech that wasn't given by one of the key leaders of the Dalit movement in India Dr. B R Ambedkar Beyond the Gender Binary by Alok Ved Menon a short short book on being non-binary and what that means in today's world told through the experiences as well as just answering the most basic questions in an accessible Q&A format Hunger by Roxane Gay a tough but unflinching read about a woman and living as a fat person in America and what was the trauma that got her there The Good Girls by Sonia Filero a true crime book about a terrible death of two girls in 2014 in Badao India which looks at not only the crime but also the institutions and society's way of dealing with it The Other Side of Silence by Urvashi Bhutalia An oral history of the partition told through the voices of the people that weren't heard from before of women children untouchables christians and more will by will smith an unflinching memoir of a true blue american icon and the winner for this honestly wasn't much of a like battle um this book just completely <laughs> i fell in love with it i think that it is essential reading um if that is like a what's it called hint for you um and the winner for this category has to be annihilation of caste by b r ambedkar i absolutely loved this book this book is truly essential reading for every indian as well as generally everyone just to understand segregation and how people can segregate people and humanity and how that needs to be destroyed um of course we have the caste movement here in india but this is so true and applicable to many um but this book truly speaks about the hindu experience and what that is like for the dalits and the untouchables in india uh, this was written way back in the 40s but is true and relevant even to today um i would highly suggest the book um that is edited by navayana which is an amazing publisher um definitely check out their books but read this book by them um i would highly recommend that you do that because it has these annotations and things that the um editor has put in which gives you so much of context um about the book so definitely check that out um i would say that if you are to read this one go straight to annihilation and cast and forget the whole like first book in in the beginning and then read that later um that's by arundhati roy but anyway um i love this book i loved all the other books as well but like this one just is so essential all right moving on we have best audiobook i listened to quite a few audiobooks this year and i had some great times reading and listening to them however these are uh, four nominees completely took my heart and they are bullet train by kotaro isaka translated by sam melisa narrated by pun bandhu Good morning good night little pep talks from me and you by Lynn Manuel Miranda read by the author High Rise by GJ Ballard read by Tom Hiddleston Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir read by Ray Porter Now I may be extremely biased <laughs> for this for this uh thing but the winner for me has to be 
Tom Hiddleston for High Rise. Now, yes, I am biased because I absolutely love the man. Um, I had in an entire video that I did this year where I read his favorites. Um, this was one of them. He was in the adaptation for this book and then he narrated the audiobook and I think he did such a spectacular job. Um, I was just like, what is going on? Um, the way that he narrated it was like a balm to my soul. I was like, oh, please continue. Um, this was just amazing and yes this may be like highly biased so I am very sorry but also it's really good it's really good y'all so like I don't know what to tell you the next category is best novella um and these are all um books that are under 180 to 200 pages max um and there are some really good ones here so let's just get into the nominees and what these books are about a Psalm for the Wild built by Becky Chambers in a world where we no longer have robots as they have gained self-awareness and gone away into the wild, a non-binary tea monk after centuries meets a robot who has a question, what do people need? The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charlie Maxey. Almost like a picture book where we meet the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse as they talk about life and what truly matters. Remote Control by Neddy Okorafor. A young girl known to be the daughter of death travels to find the seed that gave her this power over death. When the tiger came down the mountain by Ning Vo, she, a cleric, travels to collect stories but is captured by tigers that can shapeshift into women. What follows is an exploration into the complexity and the layers of storytelling and celebrates the wonder of queer love. Ah, oh my god, I loved all of these books. However, the winner for me... <sighs> has to be When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Ning Vo. This book was, if, if a book could be perfection, this would be it. Because the writing was amazing, the plot amazing, the themes amazing, the characters amazing, the, the pacing just stunning. I mean, I love this book so much. Um, I think that the themes that it was talking about was just also so relevant it was talking about storytelling and it was talking about who gets to tell these stories and what does storytelling shape shift into um based on who is telling that story it was just absolutely stunning um i loved like reading this book it was just such it was such a good book it was such a good novella and it is so short and and well paced um so i would highly highly recommend oh my god um next we are moving on to our last three categories are you excited as i am holy shit i've been also talking for a long period of time so i'm very excited for this to end because i need water a few moments later <coughs> But the next category is Best Debut Book. And these are all books that came out in 2021, but they were by debut authors. Um, and yeah, I absolutely loved all four of them. However, let's just talk about what they are and then get into the winners. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherry Jones. Set in Barbados, about four people confronting violence in a beachfront paradise in Baxter's Beach. In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Six friends, one unsolved murder, one college reunion where things turn dark and deadly and we finally figure out who was the killer. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, a lyrical novel about navigating love, friendship in the 21st century with the themes of racism and belonging. The Push by Ashley Audrain, a tense page-turning psychological drama about the making and breaking of a family and a woman whose experiences of motherhood is nothing at all or what she hoped. Now, all of these books were absolutely excellent. However, if I do have to choose a winner, I have to choose this book that has stayed with me for the longest time. I read this in the beginning of the year-ish, middle of the year, whatever, doesn't matter, semantics. Um, and it's just stayed with me. I think I'm going to be thinking about this book for the longest time. And the book is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherry Jones. I had to look at the, the little sheet that I have because I never say that name right. But oh my god, I love this book so much. I think that like the way we spoke about the different experiences that these people were having on this beach from Lala, who was this girl who was pregnant and having a child to um, this other woman, I'm forgetting her name right now, and how she was from Barbados but now has married a white man, moved to um, 
Barbados for like a summer vacation um, and just something that happens that brings them all together is just absolutely amazing i just couldn't believe that this was a debut novel um just the plot pacing everything just really like stuck with me um there are some very triggering things in this book so definitely check out the trigger warnings as well um there's a lot of violence a lot of sexual violence and just domestic violence etc um but just all of that really built this story and built this narrative um and all these characters and and everything that they were going through really like stuck with me um so yeah i'm just so happy that this book exists and if you haven't checked it out please do um it was nominated and shortlisted for the women's prize as well so it's not just my category <laughs> in general this is a great book you should definitely check this out all right before we get into my best book of 2021 i thought that we would do the best book that came out in 2021 um and the nominees for that are Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney a story of friendship love class literature mental health and navigating them all in this modern world told through the perspective of four friends Infinite Country by Patricia Engel rich with bagota urban life steep in andean myth and tense with the daily reality of the undocumented in america this is a book about a family torn apart and trying to find their way back to each other mary jane by jessica anya blau a 14 year old girl in the 70s in baltimore discover there's more to life and the world that she knew when she spends her summer babysitting for her neighbors and their celebrity guests project hail mary by andy ware A man wakes up from a coma only to find out that he's in space and has to save humanity but the kicker his memory has been wiped You and me on vacation by Emily Henry told through the holidays that Alex and Poppy have had over the last 10 years and the one they are on now to salvage the friendship we see why it broke up in the first place and would this turn into something more Okay these books were truly 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 excellent in various different ways however if i had to choose my favorite i think it would have to be in finite country by patricia angel this book tore me into pieces it is so unassuming in its writing it's about 200 pages but it tells you the story of these two people essentially of mauro and his wife and how they fell in love tells you about their lives before of them growing up about their families and then about their children that they have and how they are now struggling to find themselves back to each other this book broke my heart into tiny pieces but just in the most amazing way i love the way that myths and everything came into play i love the way that you truly saw characters love each other and what they went through there were a lot of characters that were not likable to a certain extent but like you felt for them like you were rooting for them and i just absolutely love the way that this was told um it just paints a picture of just so many things um and i absolutely loved being in their head and being in the story so i would highly highly recommend but oh my god we are moving on to my best book of 2021 holy shit y'all i don't know if you're ready for this i am not ready for this I, oh my god i am so excited this is the last category so before i begin um on the category and the nominees i would like to say if you enjoyed this then please do um subscribe that would be great if you want to help me out you can um buy books for me um through my amazon wish list or also just tip me um through my buy me a coffee link if you want i have put some solid efforts into this so i hope that you appreciate it and then and then tip me because like i don't have a uh, like on creators money haha <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying anymore but anyway let's just move on to my best book of 2021 all right the nominees are a little life by hania yanagahara the story of four friends a found family in new york city dealing with love loss and trauma told through the years now this book i have spoken about already i absolutely loved it for a lot of reasons but i also hated it for a lot of reasons as well uh, however it has stuck with me and will 
continue to stick with me um for the longest time i do have to give the author props to that i do have to give this book props to that that it it it's just going to be stuck in my head whether i like it or not however um i loved the <laughs> the story even though it was it was very harrowing i will not recommend this to anyone um but it it's going to be it, it just it was beautiful in terms of the characterizations and everything that they went through as like their relationships were built and and broken and just i loved this book so so much so that is my first nomination the next nomination is beautiful world where are you by sally rooney now you already know what this book is about because of the previous category so i will just um tell you what my general thoughts are now sally rooney is a very divisive author um however i absolutely love this book i thought that it just did a bang on job in explaining like the millennial life and <laughs> the way that we live um i feel like there are only going to be very particular millennials who are going to associate themselves with this book and um some people may not have gone through this experience however um the characters in this book um and the things that they go through i have gone through and i know a lot of people who have like in my in my friends whatever thing that have also gone through it um there were lines in this book that spoke to my soul um and i i really enjoyed it i also enjoyed the emails that um the friends exchanged i thought that it was really interesting um and i just generally really enjoyed this book so it has made it to the best of category the next nomination is hench by natalie zena walshots in a world of superheroes and supervillains we look to understand who is truly good and who is truly bad or really is there such a thing told through the perspective of a young temp who goes through her own villain origin story of sorts now i love marvel i don't know if you know this but i love marvel i love any superhero movie or anything with regards to that um i just i just eat it up so this book i feel like was made for me um i enjoyed it so much because i loved the characters i loved the way that we got to see them develop or how there were these characters that were supposedly good and we got to see a crack in their sheen and how that maybe fell apart um i just loved that the way this was told it was so queer but just like just casually queer um and i just i just loved so many aspects of this book um so so yeah that that's why this is on my best books uh list uh, but moving on we have infinite country by patricia engel Now I have just spoken about this book and why I loved it so much um but it is still in this list because I feel like it deserves to be in this list um so I'm not going to talk too much about it but it it literally just won the previous one so um well you well yeah that that's why I love it The next book is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. Now, in the previous category, I told you what it's about, so I won't really get into what it's about in in this explanation of it. However, I just this book got me out of left wing. I absolutely fell in love with it. I thought that it was so brilliantly done in terms of like just finding this child who is naive and and trying to understand what is going on in the world and how like she <laughs> finds out that the world that she lives in wasn't isn't quite like the world that is outside and how she gets to know about all of this through these like various different characters um who were just so flawed but but so amazing um i just absolutely loved this one and i thought that it it was just such a sweet but bitter book i don't know if that makes sense And the last book in this category is The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles, a young gay man in the 90s during the AIDS epidemic goes back to his small town to die. His family reacts to this situation in different ways. Now this book is told through three different perspectives. The boy, I'm forgetting his name right now, um his mother and his sister. His sister is 14 years old and she's going through her own awakening um just as a as a person and is also trying to understand what is happening to her brother um the town that they live in obviously during the 90s they want the best in terms of just general homophobia etc so the family is dealing with that um and having to deal with their feelings of their love for their son but also the sort of fear that they have about 
wanting to live in the society and how they may be shunned away from society but there are just so many different characters in this like the grandmother who's stuck by her grandson and just so many other characters and the friends and just all of that i absolutely love the story there are so many stories that are told about the aids epidemic and the things that people went through however this one just completely um killed me this book is written by an author who lives in that part of the world who has seen this happen has done a lot of research um clearly and has done such a brilliant job with it so i absolutely enjoyed it um and i hope you do too but those were my nominees um i hope you are excited because i am going to announce now my best book my best book of 2021 and the winner is Hench by Natalia or Natalie Vera Walcott. Um this book was the best for me. I hope you understand what I mean by that. This book was tailor made for me and the sort of books that I love. Um I love superhero ish things. Um Marvel was a thing that like just kept me going in 2020 and 2021 during the pandemic. I watched so much of them. So this was just Taylor made for me basically um and just the characters i really love seeing characters going through stuff um i really like that we um kind of ask each other whether is there really good in this world or is there just a lot of gray things are not black and white um and i love seeing that in in like in the pages um so i just i don't know i love this book so much yes the end i did not like but overall if i have to discount it i will because i still loved everything that this book had to say and do and um it was it was a book made for me <laughs> at the right point of time i read it at the right point of time in my life so that's the end of the bookish awards night part 1 and part 2 this is part 2 please watch part 1 if you haven't already some great um books there as well um but i hope that you enjoyed this process i enjoyed making it gave me a lot of sleepless nights um and i'm sure now that i'll have to edit it it will give me more sleepless nights but um i hope you enjoyed this i hope that you stick on and uh for my journey of my 2022 reading and hopefully the years hence um and that's all i hope that you had great fun watching this as i have said already okay bye